Good morning. Sorry to keep you waiting here. Uh, everything that could go wrong this morning did. So the fact that I am here at 904 is um, a miracle. My name is Philip Martin, one of the pastors at Epiphany Lutheran Church on this beautiful uh, March early spring day and welcoming you to morning prayer with us. Um, the song that we are singing this morning and for this week is just words of scripture. Um, I've got to tune my guitar. Hold on one second. to the song in the comments below. This is a very... I'm not liking that. There we go. Uh, this is a very repetitive song. And... Uh, I will, you will sing the first two lines once through and then repeat it, and then the second two lines and we'll repeat it. So it goes like this. He has showed thee. this. Hold on one second. There we go. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of that I sing, so it'll sound like this, wherever you are uh, watching and tuning in. So I go, he has showed thee, and you go, he has showed thee, oh man, oh man, what, and then we sing together, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Then that next part, you're to do justice, you're to do justice, and to love kindness, and to love kindness, and we together, and to walk humbly with your God. That's 
That's how that goes. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we're thankful for today the signs of new life around us, the warming temperatures and the sunshine and the angle that's just a little bit more tilted towards us in the northern hemisphere as we roll uh, onward into your unending kingdom, day following night and night following day, but your love never changing. We thank you for waking us up and gathering us together for prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So just, just to kind of give you a little uh, pre-devotion this morning, um, my son woke up and he immediately wanted me to find something that he thinks he left in the yard last night and he would not let it die and he thought he could see it from the window. and. So in the midst of everything going on, I was out in the backyard trying to find this little truck that he couldn't, that he thought was there, but it wasn't there. Um, and so then I had to take him into the yard to show him that it was not there. Uh, and so this kind of delayed everything. And then, um, then the dog came downstairs and I took the dog out for a quick um, potty break and the leash got out of my hand and this is the dog who went running. And so I had to kind of corral the dog, and that took extra time. And uh, then I brought everything in here this morning, and for whatever reason, my computer shut down. It has never done that. It just completely shut down. So I had to reboot the computer, uh, so just everything is against me. And on top of it all, I realized I got to school with my kid, and I left his backpack at home. And so he doesn't have a snack for the day. So I don't have it together. It is a Monday, but I am going to remember to show the copyright information. So we are, you will see that this morning's devotion <laughs> goes, dovetails nicely with this. We are reading from uh, our youth group and Timothy Minister's Lenten devotion, A New Creation. And Ryan Poole, an 11th grader at Stewart School, uh, offers our devotion this morning, and I'm going to read from Philippians, my favorite book of the Bible, uh, yeah, favorite book of the Bible, chapter 4, my favorite chapter. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Now that, not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In, in any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. So... Jasper's going to learn what it means to go hungry and to do with little today because his father forgot his, his backpack. Um, I think they have snacks for them at school if they forget. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, says Paul, towards the end of his letter to the Philippians and assuring them that he's going to be okay that he has already in his life had situations where he does not have enough, or he feels like he doesn't is not going to have enough, and times of plenty where he has more than enough. Um, and he's actually writing from prison at this point and just assuring them that he appreciates their prayers and that uh, Christ is all he needs, uh, that somehow... The gift of faith and the gift that uh, Christ has already uh, reconciled him to God uh, makes up for anything that he would need to have in this life. Um, Ryan says, uh, I like this verse because it reminds me that there is someone out there, Jesus, who will always look after me and help me in life. It's also, it is also powerful. And I think it sounds pretty cool, too. Yes, it does sound pretty cool. I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
If you've ever participated in sports and had a coach, you know that a coach is someone who looks after you, helps you develop your skills, and uses your gifts to make the team stronger. In Jesus, we have a coach who makes us part of the community of faith where we can learn from one another about how to serve, grow, and walk with God. Who is someone whose faith you admire? What is it about this person that makes them someone you'd like to emulate? Perhaps you have somebody in your life whose faith is like that of Paul. <clears throat> Paul does something that <clears throat> I've always felt uncomfortable doing, and that is Paul offers himself an, as, as an example to follow uh, for his congregations. And he does this for the Philippians a good bit. He does it indirectly. He also does it directly. And by that I mean sometimes he doesn't really say, well, I should say, sometimes he, very, he says very uh, boldly and kind of out there, kind of names it, just says, follow me, do what I'm doing, look at me as your example. Um, just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He does it very blatantly, um, overtly. And sometimes he's, he does it more just um, indirectly, where he doesn't really say it in so many words, but he's clearly... Uh, letting his, the Philippians or the Corinthians or the Romans know that he is a good example to look at. I don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't know many pastors or anybody uh, who is strong in their faith who says, hey, follow me, look at what I'm doing. Uh, that's, uh, that's just something that um, not many people feel comfortable doing for, for many reasons. Um, I prefer to kind of look at somebody. So maybe you have somebody who you just think is, um, is a good example of the faith. I like the idea of a coach. And uh, uh, I did not do that many athletics growing up. I did a good bit of soccer, um, but we didn't have like one coach year in and year out that I really developed a relationship with. The same in swimming. Uh, but my son started, started uh, baseball this week. Um, it's actually called quick ball. So this was both of our first venture into that sport, uh, team sport, learning new skills. And it was uh, fascinating to watch these adults. Some of them, I'd say about my age, maybe a little younger in their 20s and 30s, probably their 30s, uh, out on this baseball field with, a, with basically about 50, 40 to 50, four and five year olds many of which, like my son, had never been on a field like that before and had never held a bat or thrown a ball uh, very often. And, um, and these, these, these adults were so generous with their time to be there, but they were also generous with their patience. As these kids were just running all around, kicking dirt, rolling in the dirt, um, not really paying full attention to these new skills, these adults just kind of rolled with it and uh, tried to get on their level and just didn't, they weren't really worrying about how perfect any of these kids were doing. They just were getting them acquainted with these skills on their level. And I think of God meeting us on our level, somehow, some way showing patience with us each and every day while we are playing in the dirt and rolling around and not really following uh, all of the intricacies of, of, of uh, the walk of faith. God just being patient with us and saying, I'm going to get you through this day. Maybe that's the word I need to hear today uh, because it's going to be a day if it keeps up at this, this pace. Um, who is someone who has uh, shown patience with you patience, and understanding as you have learned to walk the life of faith. Maybe you can give God special thanks for that person today. Your coach. <clears throat> uh, let us pray. Lord, walk with us through this day. As we pray, give us today our daily bread Help us remember that this is the day that you have put before us. Help us not think about the next day or the week that follows or the next school year or whatever next deadline 
just today, Lord, that you will provide for us uh, what we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, thank you for your great patience with us. As we seek to know what it means to be satisfied with your gifts, when we feel like there is little and when we feel like there is plenty. Help us know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, indeed, it is you who strengthen us, who give strength to our thoughts and to our bodies, to our compassion most of all. Help us uh, seek you as the source of those things so that we may be fueled for whatever this day brings. Lord, we pray for those students who are beginning their school year today in the classroom. Uh, I think it is, uh, there are certain students, maybe 10th and 11th graders who are returning today uh, to those who, uh, for those who have decided to opt for in-person schooling for the rest of the year. Be with the teachers and the administrators and the resource teachers and all those in our school buildings, bus drivers, who are doing the first things in person today uh, for the year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember us, uh, remember those in our, key, in our congregation board who are in need of special prayers, especially the Becker family and the Reynolds family and the Dunavants, for Carol and Megan and Ann and Jenica. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Thank you, Ryan Poole, for your uh, leadership in your devotions today. May the Lord bless all of you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.